Okay, let's see how to adapt what we learned for pairs of discrete random variables to the continuous case. And usually what this means for us is just replacing sums with integrals, just being a little bit careful about what the PDF means. Okay, so recall, just to be clear, the joint CDF, that's the probability that x is less than or equal to little x and y is less than or equal to little y. Well, a pair of random variables, x and y, is jointly continuous if they're joint CDF, which is what I wrote up there, is a continuous function, so no sudden jumps, and it's differentiable almost everywhere. So we've seen this definition in the um, single variable continuous case. It's the same thing. Don't worry about it too much. The joint probability density function, or joint PDF, which we write little f of x, y, of a pair of jointly continuous random variables, well, this is just going to be the partial derivatives with respect to x and y of the joint CDF. And that's true whenever it's differentiable. And if there's a couple of points where it's not differentiable, which we've seen before, don't worry, you can put any value that you like. The range r of x, y of a pair of jointly continuous random variables, um, this is the same definition that we've had in every case. This is just the set of values um, where the PDF is positive. Not zero, but positive. Okay, so these are pretty standard definitions. And the only thing to really note here is that you're going to be given the joint PDF directly. You're not gonna to have to work them out from joint CDFs. So what are the properties of a joint PDF? Well, usual properties. First, we're gonna have non-negativity, so it can't be less than zero. We're gonna have normalization. So if you do the double integral, you're gonna get one probability of an event. So if you want to know the probability that you fall into a region, just integrate over that region. And finally, if you really want the joint CDF, and we're not really going to ever need it, you integrate the joint CDF up to the values x and y. Okay, but we're not going to really need this. The marginal PDFs, f of x and f of y, those are the usual PDFs we saw for the individual random variables. And the way that you would get them is it the same as in the discrete case, in, except you integrate instead of sum over the undesired variable. So f of x I get by integrating y, and f of y I get by integrating x. Okay, so I initially have a function that depends on x and y, and by integrating out the variable I don't want, I get a function in terms of just one variable. And remember, just like before, the marginal PDFs do not suffice to determine the joint PDF. There's not enough information. Okay, we can visualize the joint PDF as a 3D plot. And this is useful just to get some intuition. So non-negativity tells us it can't have negative values, and normalization will tell us that this plot has to have total volume, not just area, but volume equals to one. So here's um, just a simple joint PDF that I can draw for you. Okay, so it's kind of this elevated triangle. It has volume one. If I integrate over y, I'm going to get the marginal PDF of x. Okay, let's do that. So what does that look like? It just looks like a triangle. And if you stare at this plot for a while, you can see that um, as you're integrating out over y, um, most of the mass is kind of concentrated in the center here. And that's why this is a symmetric plot about the, um, this value at the second notch. If you integrate over x, you're going to get the marginal of y. You're going to say, see that the most mass is, again, kind of the second notch, and it's decaying all the way back down to the origin. And it's really useful for us to see the top-down picture of the range, okay? So this no longer represents any of the heights that you see for the joint PDF, just the um, parts of the 2D plane where it has positive values. That's what this triangle in the lower right is showing us. And we're going to see why that's so useful to have, okay? And um, this can all be pretty tricky if you're not uh, comfortable with multivariable calculus, but all of the concepts are the same as in the single variable case. Okay, so just to refresh that, for a single random variable, the probability of landing in a specific region is determined by a single integral. Okay, what I do is I say I'm interested in knowing when x falls into a, so I integrate the PDF of x over a, so here is uh, my PDF, here's the region A. I just figure out the area of this region using an integral, and that's my probability. 
for a pair of random variables, the probability of landing in a region, that's going to be determined by a double integral, right? So we have two variables, we need a double integral. So the probability that x, y lands in A, that just means integrate over this region A over x and y. Okay, so I draw this kind of hill, that's my um, region or my joint PDF, and I wanna know the probability I fall into this circle, so I figure out the volume of this curve above this circle. Okay, that's all it is. All right, as an example, let's write out a particular joint PDF. So no motivation for this, I'm just giving you a function. This is the range where it's valid and it's zero otherwise, okay? And so it's very useful to draw the range as a plot here. So you can think that just like on the previous um, slide, we were drawing um, this 3D um, picture for the joint PDF. This is a top-down view. So while the height of this varies with respect to x and y, I'm not showing the height here. I'm just showing this flat top-down view where it has positive values. We'll see why I need that in a moment. Okay, so let's ask this question. What is the probability that y is greater than x? It's a very natural question. You can imagine this coming up in many contexts. And we need to remember that this statement, y is greater than x, is actually the same as asking x, y belongs to a particular region B, and then integrating that region B over the joint PDF. Okay, so we've seen this many times, and the fact is that any probability question is implicitly asking us about the probability that we belong to a particular set, so membership in a set. And sketching the range in the 2D case is a really useful way to figure out what this set actually is and where we are supposed to integrate, okay? What might have been happening for you before is you might have been able to figure out that region or that set um, in your head. And I think as you go to the two variable case and beyond, that's gonna get harder and harder. So sketching it is really useful. Here's the y equals x line, all right? So once I've drawn this line, it should be apparent to me that y is greater than x above the line. So this region, x, y, in the plane, where y is greater than x is just this uh, triangle that I've shaded in purple. Okay, and I can figure out the integration region now. So first, I'm plugging in the PDF. That's what I've done here. So this is where I'm supposed to integrate. What are the integration limits? Well, I'm integrating with x first. So I go from the left to the right, and I go until I hit this line. And when I hit this line, x is equal to y. So I go from 0 to y. Once I've integrated x, I just integrate y, which just goes from zero to one because there's no more x involved. So that would have been enough, but I'm gonna go ahead and evaluate this integral uh, just so we see what the value is, just to get some experience. So I'm just going ahead and you know, following through this with this integral. So I've evaluated uh, the, y, the x part. Now I'm evaluating the y part. I get a sixth y cubed from zero to one, and that's one sixth, okay? So, um, and that's something that's actually kind of hard to visualize here because um, the piece, if you look at the, uh, the piece of the range that we've picked up, that's a fourth of the range, but because the joint PDF height is not flat, it varies with respect to X and Y, it's actually less than a fourth in probability. Notice that here, we integrated with respect to X first, but we could have integrated with respect to Y first. That was just a particular choice. You can choose to do this in either order, and you should usually choose the order that makes the integration easier. All right, let's keep going. Let's ask, when is, uh, what is the probability that y is less than or equal to x? Before we asked about greater, we're gonna do this in two ways, okay? So one way we can do this is we can just note that we actually basically calculated this before, and we can reuse this calculation. All right, so let's really try to understand what that means. So I'm asking about the probability of belonging to a particular set A, all right? And this set A is just the pairs of x, y, where y is um, less than or equal to x, okay? So that is actually this green region A here, all right? So the x, y pairs where um, y is less than or equal to x. Notice that the complement of A is equal to b. 
So we can use the complement property, all right? So A is just the um, thing that we didn't get before. So the complement property tells us that the probability that xy falls into A, that is equal to one minus the probability that xy falls into A complement. In this particular example, it just works out for us that A complement is equal to B. So I can just say xy falls into B. And we've already worked this probability out on the previous slide. It's one minus a sixth, that's what we got. So it's five sixths. What if we didn't have that available to us? Well, another way we could have done it is by direct integration. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and recalculate um, integrals here. So I'm asking y is less than or equal to x. That means integrate over this region A, the joint PDF. Okay, and so I'm going to write down the joint PDF values, one third x plus y, dx dy, and I'm going to figure out my region. So I start from this line and I go to two. So the line starts when x is equal to y, and then it goes on until it hits two. And the other line just goes from zero to one. Okay. So now I can kind of follow this through. I integrate the inside, get a sixth x squared plus a third xy. I evaluate from y to two. Okay, I'm plugging that in. So I'm getting a lot of terms, four sixths plus two thirds y uh, minus a sixth y squared minus a third y squared dy. It's gonna be still from zero to one. I'm gonna get two thirds plus two thirds y minus a half y squared dy. And that's going to work out to be two thirds y plus a third y squared minus a sixth y cubed from zero to one. And that's going to be two thirds plus one third minus one sixth. That's five sixths. Same thing as we got before. And you can see that these integrals can very quickly get out of hand. Okay, so they can quickly become complicated. We always want to try to use um, all the tricks in our book to make them as simple as possible. Okay, just to complete this, let's look at this same example and work out the marginal PDFs, which we haven't been given. We've given the joint PDF and we can work out the marginal PDFs of X and Y from the joint PDF. Okay, so how are we supposed to do that? Remember, if I wanna get the joint PDF and go to the marginal, I need to integrate out the thing I don't want. So here I don't want Y, so integrate out Y from minus infinity to infinity. That works out to be the integral from, um, so zero to one. So y's range is zero to one, so I just integrate that. And I'm just following up by writing the range of x from zero to two. You can see that x has the range zero to two, so I'm just keeping track of that case by case. And now I just start working this integral out. I got a third xy plus a sixth y squared. I'm gonna plug in y from zero to one. That's only gonna be valid where x can take positive values, that's between zero and two. So this turns out to be a third x plus a sixth from uh, zero to two. And you don't need to check this, you can just take for granted that this function that we've obtained is going to be non-negative, it's gonna have total area one because it's a valid PDF. You can do the same thing for y, okay? So I'm gonna ask for the marginal of y, I'm gonna integrate the joint PDF by integrating out x, and x now, we need to figure out the range we need to integrate. So I plug in the joint PDF and I integrate from zero to two, as I've shown here. And then I just keep going. So I'm gonna evaluate this integral, a sixth x squared plus a third xy from zero to two. It's gonna be two thirds y plus two thirds. Okay, and I'm gonna write these cases here, zero to one for y, and then otherwise it just works out to be zero. So notice, what I've done here in the top is I deliberately left the range of y out of these expressions to save some space. It was kind of annoying for me to track that when I was working out the marginal PDF of x. I was always writing this case by case, x between zero and two and otherwise, and I just had to keep writing that out. As long as I remember to write down the range in the last step so that I, you know, I know when this is valid, it's fine to leave it out along the way. I'm just kind of working out these intermediate calculations.